<laughs> I'm a musician by heart, uh, but I play multiple instruments. So at a point, I was like, how can I do all of the, those things at the same time? So then I found out about producing, and I've been doing that for seven years now. Actually, I started playing in the church. Uh, but sometimes, like the bass player, he would be like missing on the Sundays, and then it was like, shit, what you're gonna do? Like, we gotta fill that void. So, like, in that manner, I started picking up the other instruments, and then I went to bass guitar, drums, and electric guitar. Music means everything to me, yeah. It's like, all I know, all I wanna do. pandemic started and I had like a office job but I was still working there as a freelancer and then I got fired and at first I was a little bit like oh my god what am I gonna do right now I don't know what to do but then I really realized like okay I should just use this time to just time for myself what do I want to do what do I like and I remember just searching online literally like hobbies on Google and then I came I saw crocheting and I could like uh, order like a little set and I ordered that one I got it at home but then I realized that I actually already had to like have a little bit of knowledge of crocheting and I didn't so that's when I just went on YouTube searched everything and uh, that's how it actually started because I was quite okay at it <laughs> and uh, then uh, yeah I just start kept on doing it finding more ways and then I was like okay at first I wanted to make bags and I actually did that I just, just uh, sold some bags on Instagram but then I was like okay I also maybe want to like make clothes and I already made like in the beginning a few tops and people were very excited about it and then at one point I was like well actually I do really love this and why not try to make a real thing out of it and that's where Noya Studios sort of uh, was born <laughs> like have been into fashion but I never I think I actually always said like no I don't want to design or anything or like yeah do something like that maybe a little bit like styling I was doing some styling work but yeah with this I don't know I felt it felt a bit different because I'm really like making it myself really from scratch of course with other like designing just with fabrics and stuff you're also making it from scratch but I just felt like this was a bit more authentic to me it depends on what I make, uh, but at least something takes like, I would say three to four hours for things, but it definitely like opens my mind maybe because it's such a long process. And at one point it just starts to really be like a um, second nature to me. And it like when I'm, when I'm busy crocheting, that's when I get like new ideas for something else because it just, my mind just opens up about everything and yeah, it's really freeing sort of and relaxing to me also. I really love it. A lot of people are always like, how can you sit still for so many hours? But for me, it's just like, I, I love it. It just gives me peace also, like a sort of peace inside. So basically the new normal started after uh, this summer's, this past Black Lives Matter uproar. Um, and I, really felt as if there was not really a space for me and for other creatives and black and white individuals to really discuss certain matters that were going on and like certain emotions that we were feeling at that time. Um, and I'm from Manchester and so all my family is in Manchester so I, I was looking for like um, a safe space um, and so I wanted to create a safe space that wasn't like the cool kids club you know and, and where you didn't go to be seen and to chill and to flex, but to really talk and, you know, 
open up some deep conversations. I miss black people. I miss it. I missed it. I don't know. Um, but as I said, I'm from Manchester, so my whole family is black. Um, and being a light-skinned black person really... It was a struggle. It still is to find my place in like the spectrum of being black, if I can say that. Yeah, I can say that. I want to say that, so I'll say it. Um, so I kind of had to like try and find my space and my place because um, Dutch is my second language. So I was learning. Well, I've spoken it for a long time, but like my Dutch and who am I? I'm, I'm English, but I've lived here for quite a while. Um, and so community, the community that we've built with the new normal has really, really like tapped into my sense of community because I've met so many amazing people through the new normal. Um, and oh, black people are amazing. It is what it is. <laughs> I need to learn to keep balance. And this year it has taught me that. Um, Cause what I do, I am studying to be an English teacher. I do that full time. I have two days of placement in Almeida. So I teach, I actually teach uh, high schoolers from 12 to 14. Um, I am a photographer. I have a photo studio with Jalisa and I also run the new normal with Jalisa as well. So to find balance, I'd say I've not. So I do need to like transition into a balanced life. So I think that this year has taught me that Life is amazing, but it's a lot. And 2021, I need to get my shit together. I met Cuba through Shaquille, you, um, because she was looking for a panel member uh, for The New Normal. Um, it was about racism in the next generation, and she was looking for people who are experts or who have studied something. Um, so then you recommended me, because I'm a psychologist, a social psychologist. And that's how I met her. We, con we had contact through internet and then the first time I saw her in real life was at the event. I started doing these stories on my Instagram, um, in which I would discuss certain topics um, that are hard to discuss. But I wanted to open up the conversation because I felt like there was no space in which we could discuss these things. For example, um, the fact that we always see footage of black people getting murdered um, or how black women are rated the least by men and black men as well and they're the only group of women that are seen as less or least beautiful by their own group or their own race um, so these are the topics I was discussing in my story and a lot of people started saying we need a space for these conversations I am always like so afraid before I start uh, speaking in public like I could just get this tension and I'm like oh my god this is oh no it's too much it's too much but I always know when I'm there it's gonna be fine so I experienced the exact same feeling so I was just telling everyone I knew they're like I'm so um, I, I feel so much tension and what if I don't say the right things because I have this thing called imposter syndrome and I think everyone has the same or a lot of people have it and that's when you like I'm a psychologist now but I felt like I just had the degree do I really know what I'm saying um, so I was afraid I wouldn't come across the way I wanted to come across or what I had in mind. But then when I was speaking there, it was beautiful and the audience was so amazing and they're really in everything I was saying. So it was like this conversation I was having without them really saying anything. So I really loved it. And I was like, yes, I'm going to become a panel member everywhere. <laughs> I just loved it. I feel like community is a place where you can get together, be yourself, grow together. And in my opinion, we need each other. And I realized my perception on community has changed because in the past, before like everything around COVID and me working together with Cuba, um, I knew what a community was and that's everything I just described, but I still felt like I had to do it by myself. And I felt like everything I wanted to achieve, I could achieve by just working hard as an individual. And by really getting together with Cuba, I really felt the sense of a community and I felt how we need each other and how we can grow together and that you can't do it alone. You need every single person because I can be good at something, but someone else can be better at something else. And then if we work together, that's how we can grow our community. So to me, just a sense of 
an extended family. I'm working on a on a on an EP right now. It's called Cinta. Uh, the whole idea is like um, putting out a bunch of instrumentals with a concept. So I wrote like a story because it's fully instrumental. So there's a lot of space for uh, your own imagination. So because of that, I want to make it like a whole experience, actually. I think I had a good relationship with music all the time, but I, I didn't look at it the way I'm looking, looking at it right now. Because uh, this, year, this year I started making music for myself, and that was like super pure, no filters. And uh, before this year, I, I made music for other people, I produced for other people. So I think it's more personal now. I think the part when you just like listen it, um, when you listen to it the next day and it, it still slaps. <laughs> like a lot of times you just, you're making it and it's, it's weird, right? Cause like you make it and you was trying something and when it, when it, when you succeed at trying what you were doing, you're like, all right, this slaps, but it's subjective. It's not a fact that it slaps, you know, until you have listened to it the next morning. And that's what I like the most, when you're like, I, I'm not the only one who's liking this. My whole purpose of being here on this earth is like to innovate in what I'm doing. And uh, other, other people may look at it differently, but I think that if, you, if, you, if you're creating something and it's not new, it doesn't have like a real, real meaning or something. So that's my goal every time, my intention every time that I'm trying to make music. I think it's the the part where you're challenging yourself to create something new because of course we're, we're humans we're, we're affected by what we see and, and what we hear and sometimes it's hard to like forget the references but I, I'm always like trying to challenge myself to, to make something new uh, to make something groundbreaking I think my favorite piece now is, I actually made like this set for my birthday. It was super random. At first I just wanted to like buy something, but then I realized why would I buy something when now I can make it myself? So it's like a skirt uh, and a top and I just love, I'm also very much into glitter, very girly. So it was like a cute skirt with like a little slit over here and like this uh, crop triangle top that was like this. So I really love that one right now. I think that's one of my faves and coming out soon. <laughs> I think this one was also like at first my favorite because I think this was the first big like clothing piece that I made and it was really hard. In the beginning I was like, okay, wait, why did I do this? But after I, I, I got it and it was like, it feels like so like proud of myself and like really as an accomplishment that I did and I think that's where it really started like okay I really want to make clothes. Well for me it changed because I never really thought I would do something creative with like my hands that I like really made myself. I was always I think a creative person because I used to dance so I think there was already sort of like a creative creativity in me um, but I think now it just expressed itself into like really making something now like that <laughs> for right now because I'm still like quite new at it like I don't know anything about fashion I never studied it or whatever so it's really just learning everything along the way but for now I just like it's quite broad it's like a little bit for everybody I feel <laughs> other perception other people's perception of achievement was definitely very important to me because um, I was like what do you want me to do? What do you think I can do? What do you, or how do you want me to do it? And I was like a pleaser in my achievement um, and not really thinking about how I wanted to do it and how I wanted to achieve um, whatever it is that I was doing. Um, 
but I think that's normal it's part of it so it's a good thing and it motivates you you know but you need to you know stick to yourself achievement for me is trying again and again and again trying something that I like and, and deciding oh that's not for me and trying something that I like and being like oh I did this, this can stick around you need to listen to yourself first because your wellness is what is most important because if you are healthy or at least you feel healthy I hope you are as well that's when you can be the best version of yourself and that's when you can help the rest feel the same way so like my personal experience is that I was doing a lot because I liked doing everything so I was enjoying everything and I didn't realize it was stressing me out so then when I got aware of how I was feeling and that's very important get aware of how you feel and take the time to listen to your body listen to your mind and if it's racing or if you realize you're not sleeping properly take the time to listen to your body and then take the time you need to rest because I feel like we feel the pressure um, to always be achieving and it, I think it has to do uh, with the society we have been raised in as well. This year has really like opened me up creatively like I can't even describe because the funny thing is and this has to do with me studying as well I've been studying my whole life up until July like I just never stopped studying and I always felt like I was limited in my creativity and I just couldn't do what I wanted to do. And I liked, I really liked psychology. It was so interesting and I loved studying, but I still felt like I want to be finished so I can finally be like a full-time photographer and hopefully use my uh, knowledge of, a psycholo of psychology as well. So I started renting this space. You can't really see it, but there's a space behind you. Um, started renting this space at the beginning of the summer. So I want to say June, July. Um, with the idea of opening a photography studio. Um, but it's a lot of work, man. It's a lot of work. And I didn't have the energy or time. And that's what I'm saying. I, I, I'm doing too much. So I didn't have the love, the energy that I wanted to put into it properly. So then, fast forward a few months to, I think one or two months ago, Jalisa, um uh, started renting a space but then we were like no you might as well help me or do the studio together um, and so we, we've been doing it now for what two months um, and it's just a creative hub I think a takeaway for this year is to slow the fuck down and choose quality over quantity um, which is a good thing and a bad thing. I mean, it's, it's been a lesson for me, but it's also been, wow, if I just put a bit more time and energy and love into something, I could, it can, you know, blossom into something amazing. Um, and also, I think a lesson of this year has been to make decisions after having th thought about it and about them instead of in like an emotional state, which is hap with me, it's mostly happiness and, oh my God, this is so amazing, I can't wait, da, 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 da. Instead of making a decision in that high, wait, discuss it, you know, go over it a bit, and then make the decision. Because sometimes you've not really thought about it properly, um, and you've, you know, said yes to something, and afterwards you're just like, oh, I was happy, but now I'm not, and this is, what have I done? So that's a bit, yeah, a lesson. And the funny thing is the, that people were putting pressure on everyone to do something didn't affect me at all. It was the pressure I was putting on myself because I was always saying, when I'm finished studying, I am going to do things for myself. So I felt like if I don't, it was just an excuse, an excuse for why I wasn't taking as, I wasn't really, I was a photographer, but like part-time. So I didn't want it to be an excuse. So that's why I started working hard so I could prove to myself I meant what I said. But like resting is doing something. People will ask me, yeah, what do you, but I, I do realize I still kind of lie sometimes. And now I'm like throwing myself under the bus. But like if someone is like, let's chill, I'll be like, oh, sorry, I gotta wash my hair. I'm lying. But then I know they know it's wash day. So they'll leave me alone. But I'm now I'm just trying to say, I'm just chilling. I don't want to, I don't, sorry, another time. 
I want to normalize it because I used to be the, I would always find an excuse, but now why do I need an excuse? Resting is resting. Resting is doing something. It's not doing nothing. Yeah, I think like at first in March, everybody was careful like going outside and that also influenced me in how I, in how I like invest my energy. So at first I was like, all right, perfect. I'm gonna do everything by myself. But after a while you feel the urge to like collaborate with people again. And um, slowly I started like working again with people, um, but really filtered uh, in a good way. <laughs> um, I started like approaching the people that I really wanted to work with because like going outside going outside felt more precious and more fragile. So I was like, all right, well, who do I really want to work with right now? This might be my last chance going outside, worst case scenario. <laughs> and then I hit those people up. So um, I think it, it made me target um, better and who I wanted to work with. It's been a blessing and a curse at the same time. <clears throat> At first, I was like stressed the fuck out because I had tours coming up with Riman, with uh, Young Nelch that, yeah, they were canceled, obviously. But at first, I was like, shit, what am I gonna do right now? Uh, but after a while, I was like, let me just self-invest. Like, started reading books. I uh, started making music for myself. Uh, so this year has been a, a curse, but also a blessing. Uh, I found out a lot about myself, music-wise. I think I needed it because I was going back and forth, um, like the whole of 2019, and this year was like a, a year to like take it a little bit easy, and it let yeah, it made me appreciate what I'm doing more. So it influenced me in a good way. It has taught me to not hold myself back anymore, sort of. I think bef somewhere before I was like always, I, maybe I thought about doing something like really for my own, for myself, but I didn't really have like the balls to do it. And because of everything that like happened this year, it pushed me to expand my, my, my own boundaries and I definitely feel like the crocheting has really, is still expanding like my own boundaries because I still feel something like scared about releasing something or is it is this cool or is it not cool? But then I'm also like, well, it will figure, it will work out, you know? If it's not gonna be, if people won't like it, I will still like it, but I don't know. I feel like things will always like work themselves out in some way. Yeah, I think other ways for me now to like express my creativity is in the studio. I have more time in the studio now to create, to like stack, stack all my products, all my songs, all my concepts, and when shit opens up, <laughs> when festival season gets popping again, I got a, a lot of stuff I wanna showcase. So I see it like it's um, charging, charging up right now. <laughs>